Need my coffee for this one. What's up guys, Andrew from My Channel Gear Inc, where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you and on my channel, and that's PC Tech, games, and gear. And today, I want to talk with you guys about all the new CPU news that's come out. There's a ton that's flooded the market. Let me give you the bullet points, and we're going to niche down on why I think you guys might want to skip this generation, or at least this generation of AMD, quite honestly. So here's the thing. I've owned every AMD CPU for Ryzen from the first one to the current one, 7000 excluded. I've literally have two AMD CPUs and two machines I have in my house right now. I've used every generation of them, um, you know, up to this 12900K, uh, which is currently in my system. I had a 5950X in it before, but I made the change for encoding purposes and a little bit of better gaming. I have no bias against either company. I look at pure numbers. I don't care about brands. I'm not a fanboy. Fanboying to me is dumb because if somebody provides a better product, you should be willing to buy that product regardless of the brand. Now, that being said, AMD's new CPUs are out, benchmarks all over the place. I'll link some videos for you guys down below if you haven't had a chance to check them out. But here are the, basically the takeaways. So they do offer slightly better gaming performance over current generation Intel. They do offer major uplifts in multi-core speed, but it does come at the cost of much higher wattages and unfortunately much higher temps. 95 degrees Celsius is apparently okay for AMD CPUs, although you wouldn't know it from all the different uh, videos out there right now trying to disprove that. The problem for AMD is kind of, you know, multifaceted. First off, right now the 500X3D, the one with 3D cache, is beating current generation Intel, but basically comparable to the new Ryzen 7000 CPUs for the most part. That's a tough pill to swallow considering the price you're gonna pay, which is another one of AMD's biggest problems. AMD boards are not cheap for the AM4 socket, and even though we will see forward support for at least three years, there are typically generational increases in different feature sets where people will often buy the new chipset anyway um, and then kind of like backtrack their CPUs. That's what I did. I have a 350 board, a 450 board, a 550 board with different generation CPUs from AMD that I've backlogged over the years. DDR5 is also expensive and right now it just doesn't offer enough of an objective gaming improvement to make it worth the while for most people spending you know, nearly double the co uh, cost of DDR4. So if you're just building a gaming computer, the 500X3D really is like the golden goose. Like it's the best gaming CPU you can buy currently. And it's on a platform that's much cheaper to get into than, you know, AM4 uh, is and Ryzen is right now. The Ryzen CPUs are also, you know, pricey compared to Intel. And that's what's really crazy is Intel has officially announced their CPU lineup. We're going to be getting these on the 20th. And not only are they coming in at a lower cost, which now uh, AMD and Intel have fully swapped positions, because uh, yes, Intel was more, uh, you know, or less pricey for 11th gen than AMD was, because AMD was objectively better. But this is a whole other difference. We're talking hundreds of dollars. Intel has increased their core count across the board. And one of the things that's very interesting too is that yes, they do run with quite a bit of wattage, but they are going to be running supposedly at lower temperatures. Now, Working for a company that builds computers, I can neither confirm nor deny any of the benchmarks or things I've personally seen, but I will say that objectively, I'm much more excited about Raptor Lake than I am about AMD 7000, which is unfortunate because I really wanted AMD to be kind of the winner of this, you know, head to head for this generation. I don't think that's going to be the case. In terms of gaming benchmarks, Intel obviously cherry picked theirs. I think it's funny that they included the 500 in this or the 5800X3D, but they did not include Ryzen 7000. But even then you can see that they do offer better gaming performance in some situations, but man, that, that Ryzen 500X3D is hard to beat. It's still matching or sometimes beating the new Intel stuff. So we'll have to wait and see what their actual benchmarks show. Their encoding and multi-core is supposedly up 41%. That's the area that they've lacked behind in AMD. And if they can make up ground there, it's going to be a very hard sell for anyone who wants to buy AMD currently, simply from the standpoint that you are gonna be able to get DDR4 options. These CPUs will be backwards compatible with the 690 chipset, and they will basically also work with the new 790 chipset. But it's one of those things where if you have a current, you know, Intel 12th generation board, you can just buy the CPU and slot in your machine and you're good to go. That is a gigantic advantage and the cost i mean these new intel cpus are hundreds of dollars less than their counterpart from amd it's like a full 180 from where these you know these positions were two or three years ago it's nuts and so we have a situation here as much as i'd like to support team red i mean heck i'm wearing a red shirt for this video i can't recommend them over what i've seen with what's going to happen with intel um from an objective just number standpoint 
Uh, the only thing that could really change my mind is if AMD has, you know, some price cuts to kind of match Intel, that would definitely be a game changer for the market. Um, and you know, one thing that they do have going from them, like I said, is that forward board compatibility for at least a couple of years um, in terms of gaming performance and multi-core and most importantly, heat. That's something that Raptor Lake is doing very well, at least from what I've been able to see. Uh, I think it's going to be the winner. Um, besides that, unless you're, you know, coming from an older generation, this might just be when you sit out on. The next generation of AMD is going to be much more interesting, um, along with hopefully the next generation of Intel. Well, there you have it, guys. That's my opinion on everything going down. I'll link videos and links down below. But if you like this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you thought it was trash, leave me a thumbs down. Remember to get subscribed, hit that bell icon so you know when these videos drop next. But anyway, guys, I hope to see every single one of you next time here on Geared Inc.